All right, I'm changing injectors on a Caterpillar C15 engine. All right, to start, you're gonna need a half inch socket to remove six bolts. Okay, I've loosened them already. And then you're just gonna remove the cap. Or remove the valve cover. Once you remove the cap, we're gonna go ahead and remove the fuel rail. All right, you're gonna take one, two, three, four, five bolts, I'm sorry, nuts, with a 19 mil. And then you're gonna take two little ones, one, and then two right here, which is 916. Then once you remove those, you move one, two, 10 mils, and then you move this one right here, which is a 916. Once you remove all that, the fuel rail should be ready to be moved. But before we get there, we have to loosen some of these wires. So I'm gonna go ahead and start breaking some of these uh, nuts, and then I'll, I'll show you how to remove the wires, and then how to remove the fuel rail. Okay, once you break them, just take them off. Uh, be mindful that they're gonna be super, super tight. I'm gonna go over the torque specs in a little bit. I'm just showing, uh, trying to show you the fastest way on how to get it done without breaking anything, okay? And I'm also gonna show you the order on how to uh, tighten it up. So this is a specific tightening order as well. So, Also, I'm going to go over on how to take these out because these got to come off too. As soon as I get there, I will show you how. Then you're going to remove this bracket here, which is uh, known as some type of actuator. That's ready to come off. Now, inside this, you're supposed to have two O-rings, one on the top and one on the bottom. And you're supposed to replace it once you remove this. And then, apologies. Then you see this O-ring right here? You're supposed to discard it and replace it with another one as well. So you're gonna need the Caterpillar O-ring kit to uh, replace these O-rings. Now I'm gonna show you how to disconnect the connectors, the connections. It's just a little clip, clip up, and then pull. Same one with the one in the middle. Clip up, pull gently. Same one with this one, pull. Then your fuel rail should be waiting, ready to come up. Just wiggle it and then just pull up. See? moving okay now we are at the rocker arm and you're gonna remove three studs one two then three okay you're gonna need an 1116 deep well okay to put it right on top and then take them off once these three come off the whole rail with the rocker arms should come up together now be careful to remember that the flat surface goes facing up okay also let me be mindful when you take these off I'm sorry not take this off when you put these back on you're probably going to need assistance by somebody else because these rockers do not stay in place they tend to move up and down so it'll be pretty hard for you to put them right in their places where they belong with uh, just two hands so you just remove them and let me go ahead and tell you right now that these three, one, two, and three, uh, you torque them to uh, uh, 81 foot pounds of torque uh, when you put it back on. Um, and then uh, no real sequence order, but I usually go 
middle, down, then up. And what I do is I tighten it by my hand as tight as I can. And then I go ahead and put maybe a, a turn and a half with a regular ratchet. And then I go ahead and I put the torque uh, ratchet on it. I also wanted to show you something before I go ahead and uh, continue. These sleeves right here, the reason why you need somebody else just in case is because these sleeves can actually come off from the rocker arm itself. And then you could put it back without it and then it can mess with your timing. So which is very important that you actually get help. This is actually the entire uh, rocker arm right here. And uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I'm working on a uh, LED. It is a military vehicle. Now, be careful to actually cross any, to, to actually get any dirt in here. So right now I have to kind of readjust where I'm sitting at or how I'm sitting. But next you're going to go ahead and take one, then two. You're going to remove it. It's a, it's a bolt with a sleeve and this is a 916. And when you put them back on, you're going to torque them to 41 foot pounds. Okay. And I'm going to show you once I remove these, how to actually take the injector off with this right here. Now that I have loosened them, you can take them off. But before you, I continue, before I continue to take it off and I actually forget, you're going to take a quarter inch, I believe it's a seven, and you're going to come here and you're going to remove these little connectors from the actual injectors itself. And you're going to do it for this one and this one. It's going to be a cap that comes off, then you remove the wiring. Now, once I removed it, just remove the wiring. Might have to play with it a little bit to get it up. And there you go. And once you remove it, you're gonna get a pry bar and I'm gonna show you how. To remove the rest of it, to remove the rest of the injector, you're gonna to have to go ahead and grab one of these pry bars and you're gonna to have to kind of sort of go at an angle, just like so, and play with it. You see how it just went up there? Now, you should be able to lift up at an angle. Put that over there, lift up at an angle, and there goes your injector. I wanted to uh, take the time and show you something real quick. These grooves right here goes into a specific area and the grooves on the new injector. So when you put it on, you'll just put it on a groove right here on top, just like so, and it'll drop into the new one, just like that. When you, before you put the new injector in, you're technically supposed to take a vacuum line and suck out the fuel from in there to cause any cross contamination or anything like that. And um, it could be anything, it could be like a vacuum line, it could be a, uh, like a pump or something like that, just to remove it. Here goes the, the new uh, injector. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. I'm gonna go ahead and torque this down. Uh, before I do torque it down, I pretty much already uh, told you the, text, the, the, the torque specs to all of them except the fuel rail. I'm gonna show you that because I already did it on the other ones that are over here on this side over here. So I'm gonna go over them with you right now. Okay, now remember when you do the injector bracket, which is this right here, that's 41 foot pounds. The rocker arm, shaft which is this right here that i showed you it's 81 foot pounds and then the fuel rail has a specific sequence it has a specific sequence that you would do it by okay so you would tighten you would tighten let me get a better angle here hopefully you guys can see you would tighten this one up first before put all of them down hand tight but you will tighten this one up first to 78 foot pounds one two three four five now this one is six 
However, this one is 35 foot pounds. And the other one over there is 35 foot pounds as well. So the two little ones are 35 foot pounds. And then you'll just connect them back together. And then you'll uh, have to, uh, of course, test for uh, adjustments. But this is how you do a injector uh, uh, replacement on a uh, replacement and an install on a uh, CAT C15 engine on a LED or any uh, C15 engine of construction uh, equipment, I guess. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.